manage work orders. So here in this chapter, we will see how to navigate uh, to the work execution work area and within work execution work area, what are the features and tasks available wherein we will see how to define a work order and how to execute a work order. So along with that, we will also see that what are the different types of work orders we can create. We support both, as I said, both standard and non-standard work orders are also released 13. So create, update, standard, non-standard, rework, transfer work orders using the applicable user interfaces. <clears throat> so these are the topics. Overview of work execution work area. Overview of work orders. How do we create and update work orders? Work order reserv uh, reservations, exceptions and histories. And how do we import work order using your FBDI template? So overall, this is how we create the work order, then release the work order. After that, you execute the work order and then close the work order. So currently, we will talk about how do we create the work order and what are the details which we can see within a work order. And the next topic, when we see in the execution, how do we execute or transact a particular work order that we will see in the next topic. The currently, our focus will be only on creation of work order, releasing work order, what are the reports available uh, within the work order, how the details are getting populated automatically from your uh, structure details, from your work definition details, and you don't have to do anything there. So here, uh, Work execution work area, as you said, it serves as a landing page to monitor and provide quick actionable information. And it provides the insight on plant for the following uh, details like your uh, work orders, for your reworks, for operation schedule versus actuals, open exceptions, operations, VIP exceptions. And we can even filter the details of the infolets, what I want to see and what I don't want to see on my screen. So this screen, if you see here, so when you go to the work execution work area, so these are the infolets available out of box. And then I can even have a filter what information I want to see over here and what I don't want to. And do I want to see based on the work area and work center? That also I can decide uh, that I want to see for all work areas or work centers or me as a user, I'm I'm confined to a particular work area only or a particular work center. So I would require to see only data uh, related to my work area or my work center so that I can even set a filter and I can see only that kind of data which is visible for me. Manufacturing Cloud, as you know, this is integrated with a lot of applications like your product model, uh, wherein we get the item and structure details, your inventory, wherein we get your on-hand lot serial and, and uh, uh, reservation details, your costing, wherein uh, you, after performing the transactions in Manufacturing Cloud, you have to transfer all the transactions to costing, your supply chain orchestration, wherever there is an automated work order creation, you will see supply chain orchestration coming into picture and converting those uh, data and in interface to the respective work orders in the manufacturing cloud. Could be from planning, could be from order management, could be from uh, your inventory and minmax and uh, integrated with planning as we know and it also integrated with your purchasing for your OSP scenarios and for your contract manufacturing. And we also support uh, file-based data import. So we have a FBDI template out of box available. You can uh, download the template, fill in the data where, for the work orders which you want to upload and then follow the instructions as per the Excel and you can load the data to that. Work orders are also OSN enabled. So if you want to use it, enable the OS in there and then you can collaborate after creation of work, uh, work order creation too with your colleagues. So this is the flow uh, of a work order. So work orders 
screen if you see you can search work orders based after searching you can edit work orders you can mass update work orders and you can even print work order report work orders can be created from different means it can be created from planning and order management automatically uh, or from uh, min max as well or you can create a standard transfer work order manually so once either you create it from automated from planning or management or min max or manually first and foremost you have to check whether the product is serial controlled or, or yes or no if yes then generate the serial numbers and associate that if no you can directly go and open the work order and see the details of components and operations or resources within that and all this information from the work definition the work definition is the source where you have your structure as well as routing together so when you are creating the work order for a particular product which has a work definition defined for it all the information of that work definition will just get populated onto your work order now after getting populated to your work order now if you want to update any of the components delete add modify or resources you can just go ahead and do that so whatever modifications you do to your components or resources will be pertaining to this work order only it is not going to impact the work definition of that product it is pertaining to only the work order which you are working on so if you want to edit anything of that sort you can edit the operation you can edit the items you can edit the resources you can add a new resource you can delete a uh, resource you can add a total operation together you can delete the existing operation you can modify that so and so forth now once the work order get creates it it will by default it will be under a unreleased status and you cannot perform anything on an unreleased work order so if you want to perform any activity on a work order first thing it has to be under a release status so the thing you have to do is you have to release the work order once you have released the work order now you can perform the activity on that so now once the work order got released now you can just go ahead and do the transaction on, on that or execute the work order okay so when you execute the work order you will see that the components are getting consumed operation by operation based on the supply type and supply subsidiary and in the end of operation you don't have a separate completion operation the last operation of the work order indirectly or directly denotes that that is the completed operation okay the last operation the moment you complete that you will see the components got consumed and the product got produced and has been uh, kept in the completed subinventory and any moment of this time while executing the work order after completing the work order and after closing the work order you can transfer all the transactions to the costing module for costing purpose so manage work orders provide a robust capability okay for the production supervisor to effectively create and manage work orders which we have just seen so we will see in detail uh, in the demo that how minimum uh, data just with two basic data let's just give the product name what is the quantity either the start date or end date this is the bare minimum things which you have to provide to create a work order the product the quantity either the start or end date if you provide the start date it will forward schedule it and it will calculate the completion date for that particular work order based on the lead time which you have calculated while defining the work definition if you have provided the completion date system would back schedule it and say this is my start date based on the lead time which got calculated you have the options for creating the standard non standard rework and transform work orders and it's easy navigation to create and mass update the work orders if there are many work orders with you which are under unreleased and all of them you want to release in one shot you have the capability of doing the mass update all are release i want to keep everything and hold i can even go ahead and do that so all that mass update capabilities are also available serialization is honored both from the component as well as the product uh, if these are serial comp 
prints or lot control we even support uh, the serialization and we can even view the reservations if you have done a reservation against a sales order for example in the case of back to back we know when there's back to back product and when you create the sales order for that system creates a work order for it and that work order is is also getting reserved against this sales order so from the work order screen directly you can see against which sales order this particular work order has been uh, reserved you can see that from the work order screen directly and once the transactions are done on this particular work order all these transactions are getting populated into my production transaction history and i can see it from the work order or there is a separate task available from where i can see all these details now so once you see the dispatch list okay or before going to the dispatch list this is a screen where i can search different work orders so when i search work orders based on certain criteria i can see the work order number what is the priority which is just a tag over here what is the status of work order what is the product for which the work order has been created what is the quantity what is the unit of measure what is the start date and completion date and what is the status of this particular uh, work order either through this or from iconic if it is a green tick mark it means it has got completed if it is a clock with blue it means it is still in process if it is a square box it is not been started yet okay just by seeing the icon also i can this i i can visually uh, identify that what is the status of this particular work order or i can even see this fine so yeah this is the completed icon now against just beside the product you can see a small icon a small uh, orange icon over here at this moment when i have searched the product uh, so, sorry search the work order if i want to see the product details what exactly this product is for what is the name uh, description of this product what are the specification of this product i may end up going back to product model ask accessing product model open this item see the specifications come back to this work order rather than that we have provided a provision over here you just click on this small orange icon and it opens a new page for you on the same screen it opens a new page and shows you the item details so you don't have to toggle from one application to another application or from one module to another module to refer or this to see any of the relevant data from the same screen you can even view the data which you want to look into <clears throat> so this is the uh, basic flow uh, manage work order you create the header basic uh, select the product for which you are creating the work order provide the quantity and just provide either the start date or end date and there are two ways of creating the work order either through the ui or through a fbdi put template this is a typical screen you can see over here on the right hand side you just provide the product name what is the quantity either you provide the start date or if you click on the show more you will see the completion date as well either this or that and just say save and close your work order got created okay or you just say save and edit if you want to do any changes to your work order which is getting created so you can see over here this is for creating a non standard work order in the case of uh work order standard work order okay work definition is optional in the case of non standard work order whereas in the case of standard work order it don't require because the product itself will have its own work definition right so when i choose the work definition all the data of that work definition will get populated to your work order in the case of non standard work orders which may be required for your rework repair disassembly and all that you can decide what uh kind of components of operations i want either i may use the same work definition or i may create or add or deselect or remove certain components or resources that provision is provided to us or left to us that whatever 
information from the item perspective or from the component perspective or from resource perspective or operation perspective you can define them on fly or leverage the existing work definitions rework order work order almost same as your uh, non standard wherein if you have already created a work definition for a rework you can even leverage that so that the operations and the components which are used for the reworking of that product will be defaulted in this particular work order and then you can take it forward <clears throat> so in the case of a transform work order uh, the work definition is is optional again and how work user must specify the transform from item from where i am going to transform this okay from one item i want to transform this the transform from item is the item from which the work order item is been transferred to you can see over here from where i am going to get it transferred and the valid work definition type transform that are defined for the work order item and the transform form item combination are displayed and the user can select one of them either this you can select that the transform work order can be created in a released right and an unreleased or created in on order so whatever i am going to create i can decide this status and what status i want to create it and the remaining behavior is same as that of any standard or non standard work order right only thing is i want to transfer from this item to this type item once the work order got created you will see if you have not provided any uh, number so based on the sequence which we have set at the plant parameter level based on its um, prefix and starting number system is going to create a number also for us so this will be the work order number and then followed with what is the product for which i have created the work order then in the general information i can see what is the status when it got started when it is going to get complete any description what is the quantity and under work definition i can see the work definition details under item structure i can see the item structure details and some more details whether it has gone created from a contract manufacturing uh, scenario or it has been got created from a back to back scenario you can see all the details and what is the completion information when this product is going to get completed where it is going to be completed which subunit it is going to be getting completed and apart from that any additional information if you have enabled the dff if you want to capture any more information you can see that that is about the general information if you come to the operation tab okay if you come to the operation tab you will see some more details like what are the operations for but that particular work order within that operation what are the components used what are the resources used how much is required how much has been issued how much resources has been required and usage is required and how much has been issued for each and every operation we can see all the details and all these details are getting defaulted from your work definitions at this level when this got defaulted at this level if you want to edit any of the operations you want to delete operation add operation within an operation you want to delete components add components modify them add resource remove resource modify them you can do everything using this particular pencil icon anything you can do it over here and work orders are again social uh, network enabled so if you want to collaborate with any of your uh, colleagues you can do that and some places you will see a small link if uh, the if the i components are more it can only show you 3 to 5 at a time so it will just collapsed if you click on that hyperlink so more items will be shown to you fine uh, then <coughs> resource details item details now uh, in the screen of work order when you search the work order we have seen the work order number the product the quantity uh, when started and when ended and what is the status of that 
and then i have talked about there is a small uh, amber icon on the product if i want to see the product details i can just click on that similarly for the components also in this screen if i want to view the component details and the specification of a particular component uh, that provision is provided i can just click on that small icon and just opens a new window for me wherein i can see the component details thoroughly all the specifications everything and then we have the concept of midpoint scheduling <laughs> fine uh, this is for your osp okay if this is a supplier operation then how the details are shown so operation sequence number is defaulted based on the plant parameter and then uh, you can capture additional information of the operation if a dff has been enabled <clears throat> and if the operation type is supplier as you know this is an osp uh, then uh, outside processing item supplier it generates a shipment indicator which values can be updated so all these values for which supplier for which site this particular item has to be uh, generated for or the purchase equation has to be generated for all this information it will be taken from this particular details fine so this is additional information again uh, if you have any attachments attached at any of the operation level uh, for resources or components all those op attachments also you can see over here and if you want to upload anything you can even upload that for which uh, it will be helpful for the operator when he performs that particular operation using the components and using those resources so that is also possible and when you are scheduling any work order okay so either you can give uh, the start or the end date as i said and again uh, when you are scheduling it system provides you an option that you want to do a forward schedule or a backward schedule okay and uh, then based on whatever mm, uh, schedule method for the start or completion you have selected system takes that as the anchoring date and time and then schedules either forward or backward similarly we have a midpoint scheduling concept here so i will just try to explain you with an example <coughs> so you know if you give a start date so system is going to come uh, calculate the completion date based on the lead time similarly if you have provided a completion date system is going to calculate the start date based on the lead time which is backward schedule now imagine you have many operations in a particular work order okay and at a particular operation due to some reason you know that you cannot complete that particular operation in certain time okay suppose you are supposed to complete that operation at 1 pm or 1 pm in the afternoon okay but due to some reason either the breakdown or non availability of the resource or some something due to non availability of the material could be any reason i cannot complete at 1 pm but i would be able to complete that at 4 pm so how much time i require i need three more hours so because i need three more hours to complete this operation all the operations which are after this operation will also be get modified accordingly apportioned accordingly so to do this if there are some 10 operations i may have to end up doing manually but if i use midpoint scheduling concept so i can decide at this operation if i cannot complete at 1 pm if i complete at 3 pm and i put that 3 pm for that particular operation okay if i put that 3 pm for that particular operation and say uh, midpoint scheduling schedule so system again as takes this as the anchoring point and all the subsequent operations after that will be shifted to two more hours from 1 to 3 i said so all the subsequent operations after that will be shifted to 2 hours more so this is about your mid point scheduling okay and all the operations prior to that will also be apportioned accordingly if they are not started yet if they have started those will be not 
impacted if those operations are not started yet even the operations prior to that particular operations will also be get apportioned or will adjusted according to this time so that in spite of starting at 9 am probably they will start at 11 am that is about your midpoint scheduling if you create a work order for simulation it's probably the same way only difference is you have to generate the serial numbers and associate them at the start okay <clears throat> so at start you generate the serial numbers and associate them that is the only difference reservations you can see if it has any reservations you will see that the reservation tab is enabled and you can see that what is the sales order number okay uh, automatically there will be a new tab on the work order with reservation and you can see all the details what is the sales order number what is the customer what is the quantity what is the line number and and so and so forth if there are certain exceptions for a particular work order on operation we can see all those exceptions okay just beside you will see another tab opening with exceptions and all the details what are the exceptions for that particular operation and accordingly you can take appropriate actions on that regarding the history tab you can see the entire history of that particular work order what was the quantity started how many got completed how many got scrapped when it got started when it got completed when as the status got changed from unreleased to released who has done that okay all the history will be uh, it's a kind of an audit trail audit you can say against for that particular work order you can see here under the history tab and then you have transaction history link so all the transactions which have performed on this particular work order you can see from here and we also have a task separately available wherein if you want to search you can search for all the transactions which has been performed on a particular work order coming to the import work orders <clears throat> so once you download the file you populate the excel template which has been downloaded with all the relevant information then uh, convert that into in a csv file follow the instructions then run load interface file schedule process this will make sure that all your uh, interface tables are get populated once that is done run the import work order schedule process once this is completed you will see whatever data which has been um, keyed in in the excel template all that work orders got created in your uh, application <clears throat> so it's pretty same method which we have discussed in our item integration session using the bdi how do we load the items the same process only difference with that and this is the file is different the ucm path is different and the program which you use for input program is different but all the instructions will be provided on the excel which we use so so this is what uh, is there for your uh, work order uh, from the definition explanation perspective now let's go into the system and see how do we create a work order so let's me let me go to the environment under the manufacturing we have two work areas work definition we have already seen where we do all the setups and define the work definition we have seen that under work execution <clears throat> when you go to work execution is again manufacturing is org specific you can see so many info tiles available out of box and i can even filter what info tiles i want to view and what not then do i want to see the data for all the work areas and work centers or i want to see only specific to a particular work area i can even decide that so whichever is of my interest and whichever uh, work area or work center i am responsible for i would like to see only data for that so accordingly i can even filter all this data and view only that data so once i see all this data i can decide what are the critical ones how many are passed you 
how many work orders are on hold how many are unreleased how many operations are ready rejected accordingly i can take the appropriate actions right and these are just not the mere representations if i click on that it will just open a new page with all those details to me so what is the work order number what was the product how much quantity what is the status when it got supposed to start and complete and this icon over here the yellow triangle icon just shows that these are under past you okay so visually also i can make it out okay these are the problematic ones okay so that is about uh, your info tiles okay. now going to the task trial so here manage work order is the one which we use to create the work order so i can search a work order with number quantity or any of the status or i can create it from scratch so if i click on this plus icon just you see a small drop down so it shows me what are the different kinds of work orders i can create i can create a standard work order non standard work order a rework work order or a transform work order so i'm going to create a standard work order so select that so with bare minimum information <clears throat> i can just give a product for which i am going to create the work order for i will take the same product which we have uh, created and uh, defined the work definition under 002 organization how much quantity i want to produce let's say i want to produce only two quantity and this will be under unreleased state if i want to release it up front i can do that or keep it as it is the work definition for which i am creating this work order do i consider the main process or any alternate process i can decide that and then if i provide the start date system will calculate the completion date if i provide the completion date system will provide the start date and there is a sub type it just a tag on in again this is just a look up just by looking the work order for what purpose i am making this i can decide that so based on the business requirement you can just go out, go ahead and add some more values to that lookup and utilize that and because this is un and if i say save and close system is going to generate a automated number for me or you can have your own number here whatever you want provided system will even validate this if this number is already there or there or not okay if this is null and if i say save and close so system would had created a work order for me this is the number this is the product this is the quantity which is under unreleased state and this is the progress okay and this icon which i was talking about if i want to see the details uh, of this particular product all the specification all that i don't have to go back to the product model to view it rather i can just look it click on this particular icon it opens a new page for me okay here you see all the basic details for that if i want to see the specifications of this particular product i can just click on that it opens a new page for me and see i can see all the details so i cannot change anything but i can see entire details of that particular product all the details i can see the planning physical attributes everything i can look into that then i can close that fine at this moment uh if i want to print the component list i can do that if i want to print the work order traveler print label everything i can print it over here for this particular work order okay now let me release this work order so it got released now if, imagine if there are many orders over here for which i want to change the status in once i can do all these mass actions i can unrelease them i can release them i can put in hold i can cancel them i can change the priorities or i can even close a number of work orders in one shot okay now let's go ahead and look into uh the work order details and the moment it got status got changed i can see the status of the work order has been released and this is the search criteria so let me open the work order and let's see all the details within the work order so this is the work order number wo work order hyphen for 002 organization 1024 is my uh, continuous number and this is the product for which 
we have created the work order within the organization 002. The status is released, start date and end date based on the lead time it has calculated. We have not provided any priority, how much quantity, the work definition which has been used, the main, what is the item structure which has been used, the primary, other details, whether it has come from back to back, contract or manually it got created. Completion information for this particular work order. When this work order gets completed, it should be uh, completed in which subordinate, whether completed or any other subordinate for defaulting again. But at the time of completion, again, I can decide. <clears throat> and then under operations, All the operations along with components and resources has been defaulted from your work definition of this particular product. Okay, so here you can see three. I want to see some more components. I can just click on that. I can see all the components here. Show less. I can even collapse it. Okay. Show more. So each and every component, how much quantity is required and how much has been issued is provided to you in the bracket how much has been issued and how much is required so each and every operation if you want to edit anything of this click on this whether you want to edit the operation whether you want to edit the operation items whether you want to edit the operation resources anything is possible over here and you can go ahead and do that if you want okay any of the information which you want to uh, edit you can edit now at this moment if i want to see what are the component quantity available within my organization so i can just go to view and just say columns and manage columns then i want to even see the on hand balance of a particular component I can just drag this over this say okay so for each and every component i can even see this component actually required one for this particular work order because it is for two quantity it's required two and what is the balance of this in my on hand so 9000 quantity is already there in my organization for this item this much quantity is already there so as you know any typical page of cloud if you want to see some hidden columns you just go to view manage columns and pull in them and you can see all the details okay just say okay <clears throat> This is about the operations and if you want to modify anything, you can just go ahead and do those changes as well. And then the mid pad scheduling, which I was talking about. Let's say, I may, let me show you the demo. Let's say in spite of this operation completing at 12.51, it will be completed at 2 p.m., let's say. Okay, or let's say 2.51 p.m. Okay, then what will happen? Obviously this is, this will get moved. And then this will get moved, this will get moved, and because this operation is not started, this will also move. Imagine a situation wherein you have some tens and fifteens of operation in a single place. Due to some issue, one operation cannot be completed in one time, and accordingly, you have to apportion it or you have to adjust all the previous operations and all the subsequent operations. So, in spite of doing that manually, we can do that using this midpoint schedule. So, select that. And just say this using operation start date. In spite of this, I want to complete or I can complete only after uh, one second itself. Uh, 2.51 p.m. Right? If I say, OK, what will happen to this? In spite of four, it has become six fifty one. Okay. Similarly, this has been adjusted. Similarly, the subsequent operations also got adjusted. So this is the feature of your midpoint scheduling. And just say save and close. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> okay, no problem. We can even search our order again, which is released and 
for the item demo search there you are okay then say open this so i want to change the start date to second i'll say third in spite of this so that nothing will be under past you <clears throat> That is fine. Okay, the work definition itself is not defined at that stage, so it is not allowing me to do that, which is fine. Which I have just changed it so that it is not in past you anymore. It was just a warning given to me. Okay, fine. So this got updated. We have seen the operation uh, three also, and we have even looked into our midpoint scheduling. What are the details which I want to? If I want to change, I can change. Then come into the history tab. So you can see over here the remaining quantity, completed quantity, scrapped quantity, when it got closed, when it got completed, when it changed the status from unreleased to released, who did that, and all the transaction details and inspection history, everything you can see over here. So this is about our work order definition. Okay. And uh, that is fine. <clears throat> and before I uh, move to the next topic of uh, execution, let me show you how to download the FBDI template. If you want to upload the work orders, docs.oracle.com, applications. Cloud documentation for application, then select supply chain management under that SIM core. Select a particular release for which you want to see either BDI or uh, the documents. Click the books link on the left hand pane and then go to FBDI file based data import. Under that, click on this link, and here these are the objects for which you can leverage or use the templates to upload the data for inventory transactions for item item structure so and so forth all these objects are available out of box you can just so work orders so click on this there's an xml template already available download that this is the ucm account once you create fill in the data in this xml convert that into csv follow the instructions given in the xml and then you have to place this file in this path load it run the import program pretty simple so the next topic which we are going to talk about is on execution of production so now you have created the work order based for a particular product for which you have a work definition and whatever work definition details for that that got populated if you want to do any changes we have seen how to do the changes okay we have released the work order now the time is to execute the work order you can perform the transactions on this particular work order so next topic which we are going to discuss is about execute production 